Welcome back guys, it's Dr. Somji. This is a really important video because we're going to be talking about the most important piece of your skincare routine that you can ever have. It's called sunscreens. Everyone thinks that all the sunscreens are the same. They're not. There's two different types of sunscreens, physical and chemical sunscreen. So physical sunscreens made up of two main ingredients, zinc oxide, titanium oxide. They essentially reflect those UV rays away from the skin, protecting it against collagen degradation, pigmentation, all the nasty things that UV, UV does. It's great for reflecting essentially, for example, UVA rays through the window. So if you're driving long distances and you've got those short rays um, hitting the skin, then titanium oxide is fantastic for that. And that's where physical sunscreens are great. Why do people not like physical sunscreens? Well, especially in my darker skin types, it takes ages to moisturize in and it can leave that sort of chalky residue that's not so great. It's also when you're on holiday, unfortunately, physical sunscreens are not great at being water resistant because most of it's about that reflective quality. Also the small particles in there can also irritate the skin, especially if you've got an impaired skin barrier as well. So people stay away from physical sunscreens and think about sunscreens because of physical sunscreens and the way that they don't like it on the skin. But nevertheless, it's one of the few things that blocks all forms of, of rays. And that's why physical sunscreens for especially doctors, they always recommend it for patients that are essentially prone uh, to uh, things like pigmentation and other pigmentation disorders such as melasma uh, within clinic. So which physical sunscreens do I recommend? Well, you've got the Clinique Mineral SPF 50, which is actually quite nice because it's a lightweight formulation. Um, it's something that can be easily reapplied. That's my main theme that I always talk about in when I talk about sunscreens, mainly because the effectiveness of sunscreens is not one's mineral, one's chemical, one's a mixture, one's got this ingredient, one's got that ingredient. It's not that. It's about how many times you apply it and whether you are consistent with it. Essentially, well, <laughs> there's no point in having a nice sunscreen that you only wear once a week because you're not gonna get any benefit from it. So second one that I like is the Kills Ultra Light Mineral Sunscreen, which again, I like to recommend light mineral sunscreen, and light physical sunscreens, mainly because um, you've got to use it again and again. The other one is the Ren, um, SPF 30. The reason why I chose this is because sometimes a lot of patients come back to me and say to me, you know, use this physical sunscreen. I kind of broke out. You break out a lot more with physical sunscreens for some reason, um, mainly because obviously it blocks the skin. So it's comedogenic, um, doesn't allow the skin essentially to breathe. Um, and you can get kind of a little bit more sebum production as a result of the surface of the skin being a lot drier. But this REN um, uh, sunscreen is mattifying. It stops that sort of sebum production that you get as a result of applying the physical sunscreen. So it definitely can help people that are, let's say, more acne prone. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of patients say to me, I don't wear sunscreen because it breaks me out. So there are options with the physical sunscreen. Personally, in my skin type, um, unless I'm in like a really, really high sun or I'm having a long drive, I probably wouldn't put physical sunscreen on um, too much, mainly because I just don't like the way that it feels on my skin. Um, I prefer chemical sunscreen because I can reapply nicely and I know throughout the day that I'm gonna get an adequate protection. So let's talk about chemical sunscreen. It's different in the way that it protects the skin against UV rays. So it's got active ingredients within the skin that absorb the UV rays. So you've got oxybenzone, avobenzone, octisalate, octocrylene, homosalate, and ox, ox, octinoxate. My God, I can't even pronounce it. But anyway, look, they are ingredients that essentially absorb those UV rays. So a lot of, um, there's a lot of hysteria about chemical sunscreens and its effect on the body. Um, there were some rumors many, um, well actually not many years ago, a few years ago about oxybenzone and how it can affect endocrine function. Um, a systematic review looking at its effects found there was no adverse effects with it. But these things, because they're absorbed in, in the body, just because something is noticed within 
the bloodstream, it doesn't mean that it's dangerous. And you're applying a very small amount, so it's going to be undetectable, so it's unlikely to cause any problems. Now we do know that some active ingredients, some chemical uh, sunscreens, um, aminobenzoic acid, for example, uh, with the acronym PABA, PABA, and trolamine salicylate have been banned by the FDA. So this is what concerned individuals. And also some ingredients, such as I mentioned oxybenzone or octinoic exate, um, damage coral reefs. So um, it's, and they're continually getting banned. So it's really hard to build a chemical SPF. I know for the last essentially five years I've been formulating my own skincare and I've had to change it because a lot of the chemical uh, ingredients have been banned and they're continually being banned. So the future for chemical sunscreens has to essentially improve um, because we can't be damaging the environment. We can't have these rumors of these health concerns there. Um, but we do know that chemical sunscreens absorb better onto the skin. Um, when you're looking at applying sunscreen every hour for the whole day, people will be more happy to apply chemical sunscreens than physical sunscreens. And there are some nice ones that have a mixture of uh, chemical sunscreen and physical sunscreen. So they have the chemical ingredients, but they also have some zinc oxide. Um, one interesting product that I was introduced to by a friend of mine was a Shiseido sunscreen stick. Um, and one of the reasons why I like it is because it's, again, it's mattifying and it won't break you out. So again, if you are worried about chemical SPF causing irritation on the skin, then um, you can use uh, products such as this. Elta MD um, has a mixture of both mineral and um, chemical SPF and it's a great combination. So it satisfies both parties. But let's look at the conclusion now, okay? so. What is best, better, physical or chemical? There is no answer to which is better. Again, we talked about in previous videos about SPF 30 versus SPF 50. It's the same answer. No one is better if you, because, mainly because the benefits of SPF is the ability to wear it every hour within sunlight to reapply and to apply it every single day, even if you are indoors. Now, if it means that you wear physical sunscreen and you don't want to apply every hour, then you suddenly, that, that 0.23 benefit that you might have goes away. Same with an SPF 50 as so an SPF 30. That's the reason why I always encourage patients actually, if you're just starting to wear SPF, wear SPF 30 because you get into a habit of layering SPF 30. Or you could wear SPF 50 and then layer with SPF 30. So there's no such thing, but there's no one is better than the other. Um, so complicated one there, but um, look, I've given you some good product recommendations, um, especially for patients that um, also have acne prone skin as well. If you think that there's any um, SPFs that you want me to review, I'll be doing another SPF video, um, looking at specific products from different brands. If there's any you'd like me to feature, click subscribe. And also let me know in the comments so I know how, to, how and when to make a video.